I am James. This is Chasing Nothing, and part two out of a four-part series documenting a trip I did back in 2016. Things, well, they're about to get a little bit interesting. As I left you last, I was stuck in Mongolia. My motorbike broken after only three months on the road. We tried fixing it, yet the bike kept breaking over and over again, and at one point wouldn't even make it more than two k's down the road. This would continue for about five weeks, me growing more and more frustrated with the situation. I tried everything to distract myself, going horse riding for a week at one point, even swapping my motorbike for a local bike, which was just as bad, and trying my hand at getting chased by wild dogs. Eventually, I got the Kawasaki working well enough to take it across the border. I limped it up into Russia, and there, I kid you not, in just an hour, the Russians fixed what the Mongolians couldn't in 45 days. And that was it. I was off and crossing Siberia once again. Here, autumn was well in swing and the view was spectacular, but I couldn't stay long. Winter was fast approaching and I had a limited visa. So, after a quick dash across the country and some farewell drinks with the Russians, I soon found myself in Kazakhstan. Welcome to Kazakhstan. If you like wide open spaces, this is the country for you. However, I didn't get the chance to really enjoy it much. I was through there in under a week. I didn't have time to waste. I wanted to get as far south as possible before the temperature was going down. It's not always glamorous countrysides. Sometimes when you're making camp in the middle of the night and it's raining, you pick something like this. So without much ado, I found myself across the border and into Kyrgyzstan, a land of mountains, Horses, really nice people, some shit driving, and well, more than a few challenges. Yeah, so this is my worst case scenario on this trip, and it happened. That's a 250 kilo bike laying on my leg in the middle of nowhere. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, this is not ideal. What the fuck? And so it goes through the endless mountains and winding roads of Kyrgyzstan, dodging local drivers who insist on driving on your side of the road, and, uh, Paying some administrative fees. Yeah. Plenty of interesting moments. Okay. And it was out here in the remote parts of Kyrgyzstan that I meet Anya and the boys, Josh, Adriano, and Tom. With these guys, I'd crossed the dangerous Pamir Highway. As great as it was traveling solo, it was good to have company. The four of them were backpacking until, in is it cool, so Tom close. decided to buy a Soviet-era 1970s built hey. Lada. Which, if I had to be honest, had seen better days. And you're going to do the premiere on this thing? Well, we're swapping it for the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> and by other thing, he means this green Lada that you can see now. Which wasn't much better. And so it went, as we travelled through the rest of Kyrgyzstan, battling our way through remote mountain passes and trying to make the larder work against all the odds. We organised our accommodations so that we could keep meeting up if we lost each other out there on the road, and if we couldn't find somewhere to stay, we just camped by the side of the road. We continued like this, until, of course... What happened? I think she's dead. Yeah, I say we can check the Terry's hash and see if we can organize a ride in Terry's hash for the four of us. 
This wasn't the end of traveling with these guys, they just simply went back to hitchhiking from this point on, catching me at each of the hostels that we'd planned to stay at. However, it did mean that I had a few days of riding on my own through some amazing autumn weather. Holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Winter no. had kind of caught up with me, so I had to get out of there. I aimed for Tajikistan where I knew it would be dry, catching the guys up at Saritash. This tiny little village is the last stop on the way up into the Pamir Highway before it gets really crazy. And we were advised to stop there for the night in order to adjust to the altitude just because it is so extreme. This proved to be a bad choice. We've been snowed in and it's showing no sign of easing. The roads were iced over and I was stuck. I hadn't planned to be riding through the snow. I only had dirt tires and I really wasn't ready for this. The boys were able to hitchhike ahead. However, Anya and I ended up stuck in that town for over a week. No internet connection, no ATM, and slowly but surely running out of money. Eventually the roads did clear enough. Anya went on ahead hitchhiking and I encountered the only other motorbike rider silly enough to be caught in this part of the world at this time of year. Khan, a crazy, crazy Korean dude. He and I teamed up and together we tackled the mountain pass that divided Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. One crash at a time. There was no two ways about it. We had to get out of there. We were running out of money, petrol, and time. We continued like this on the first day, all the way until the snows went up to our knees and we were forced to turn back, defeated. I stacked it for about the fifth time. We turned around about three kilometers ago. This is just not working. Fuck this. The mountain passes behind us were well and truly snowed in. The only way out of here was forwards. Failure at this point would have meant giving up on everything. I had no easy way to pull the plug, and I couldn't even call home. It was just myself and Khan against a whole lot of snow. I was stuck. However, this time, I wasn't so sure I was going to make it out in one piece. <laughs> 